lot can be said about Sonic Adventure 2. For one, it was the last Sonic game on the Dreamcast, and it was the last Sonic game that was exclusive only to Sega. But on another note, it was the first Sonic game on a Nintendo console. Never did any of us expect to see Sonic on the same console as Mario. For a while, it also felt like this was the last Sonic game. Because at the end, this is a spoiler here, Eggman and Sonic come to terms, and Sega was also pulling their console out of the console wars. I think for many Sonic fans, it was an odd time. This game definitely had its effect on fans though, and it even stood as an excellent title in the Sonic series. Sonic Adventure 2 had, in my opinion, one of the greatest stories that you actually care to follow. Though keep in mind that this is an adventure platforming game, so don't be expecting a story like Mass Effect, but the game does open with Sonic running from the law, escaping security on a plane. It makes you wonder why Sonic of all people was running from the law. And of course it all boils down to mistaken identity though. And it's a black hedgehog named Shadow who is causing problems that Sonic is being blamed for. And Shadow is out for revenge against the whole human population for being so cruel and killing someone he loved dearly. The game has more depth to it, but for the most part, that is the basic premises for this game. The game had a fun feature where you could play as the heroes or the villains, and save or take over the world. It was a new feature for its time, and it offered depth to both sides of the story, justifying why Shadow was out against everyone. The game was quite simple to control, and it consisted of three different character elements. There was Sonic and Shadow, who were speed levels, the whole reason we play Sonic games. Then there was Eggman and Tails, who drove little battle tanks with missile launchers, which was very reminiscent of E-102 in the first Sonic Adventure game. And last would be Knuckles and Rouge the Bat. She was also a new character. They ran through open environments searching for pieces of the Master Emerald or keys. If I had any complaint on this game, it would be the later levels for Knuckles and Rouge, because finding some of the items could be very hard. I remember the levels in space where you would walk around on small planets and the camera did a terrible job of keeping up. And I just ended up getting a headache and dying for these levels to end so I could play as Sonic or Shadow. But that is just my opinion. One thing to know is in the GameCube version, they put an exclamation mark over the character's head to let you know that you were right there where the piece of the Master Emerald should be because sometimes it was really hard and you would spend forever digging for the item in the original Dreamcast. So that helps a bit. Again, the game is great, it works well and is a lot of fun. Aside from what I said, there is nothing wrong with this game at all. And if you ask me, Sega needs to work on a Sonic Adventure 3. Come on Sega, I know I'm not the only one out there. This game has also had small features. They continued the virtual chow pets, which you either like this or you could care less for it. This game also did feature two player competitive play whether it be racing or shooting from the little battle tanks or kart racing, so this definitely expanded that gameplay. The game also had an option to replay levels to beat scores and gain more emblems, or sometimes you could go back and revisit levels just to unlock power-ups or alternate routes to increase your overall score. The game had and has good graphics. Keep in mind as you're watching, this game is about 10 years old, and if you are watching this review, I mean you can clearly see this. Voice acting is typical for a Sonic game. The lip syncing is way off though, but due to good voice acting, it definitely is forgiving. Fans of Ryan Drummond will be glad to have this game in their collection, since people tend to pick sides on the quote unquote best Sonic voice actor. Overall, this is an excellent game. It came out celebrating Sonic's 10th anniversary at the time, and as I stated, it had a lasting impression on many. To some it was the last true Sonic game that was really enjoyable, but that is just one's opinion and really shows you its lasting appeal. The game is available for GameCube and Dreamcast. Here you are seeing the GameCube version, but it is very easy to come by for either system and it is a must play for fans of Sonic who may have never played it or just to add to your Sonic collection. Here is to hoping for an Xbox Live port or maybe even a sequel. But anyways, definitely try the game, or dust it off and play it again. It's worth reliving. And here's to hoping for another 20 years of great Sonic games. If you guys enjoyed, please subscribe. Also check out my review from last week, I'll put a link here, of the first Sonic Adventure, and let me know what Sonic game you would like to see me review. 
Since this year is Sonic's 20th anniversary, I want to revisit these games and give them a review. But again, thanks for watching. See you guys next week. The reason I'm in here is because of that fake hedgehog. You mean that black hedgehog? Did you see it? Where is it now? If I tell you, will you marry me? No way! I thought I had you this time. Make sure to hit the subscribe button above this video on YouTube and stay up to date with Trevor Clark's latest videos.